Today we're doing an install on a 64 Ford Falcon Sprint. Nice little small block V8, C4, Cruise-O-Matic. It was probably originally a two-speed Cruise-O, now has a three-speed Cruise-O-Matic. And then just, of course, added the Gearbender's Overdrive. And uh, we're going to go out and go for a quick little ride. First thing I want to show you is up here on the dash, we have two lights and a, and a switch for control functions and a dimmer switch on the floor for a manual control because this is a, a automatic car with a column shifter. We're going we're gonna to shift the gear vendors when we want to in a, in a manual mode. We can shift it with the high beam dimmer switch. I've got the dash switch set to the auto position as you can see by the red hash mark. If it was up here that'd be the manual position. I've got it set to the red so that's the auto. If I leave my dimmer switch on it'll display the auto lamp which is going to display red until we're in overdrive. We'll go down the road that's going to go through its normal three gears one two three then shift into overdrive at 47 miles an hour or whatever we put the prom at got the dash switch in the auto position. We're going to take off. It's going to go one, two. Um, as we accelerate, it'll go up to third gear. Then into overdrive as we get up in the faster speeds there, it shifts to overdrive. So, so now we got this totally four-speed automatic that will cruise down the road comfortably at highway speeds, even though it's a classic car, of course. Coming up on 70, we're at 70 miles an hour right now. Tachometer says we're doing about 2700, which is a very nice cruising speed for a carbureted small block. Another nice thing about the gear vendors is that when we're on one of these transmissions, one of the classic era of, of automatic transmissions, these transmissions had governors on their output shafts that spin relative to the speed of the of the drive shaft and that's how the transmission would know between that and the throttle position whether or not to downshift or not so this vehicle without an overdrive if I romp on the throttle it would just either not shift down or if it did shift down it shifts all the way to second gear which is a really tight wound space where we don't really get a lot of acceleration with the gear vendors on when I mash down the accelerator it'll give me a downshift into second overdrive that gear right between second and third at a 28% faster road speed. So it, it's down at second over right in the power that gear right between second and third. When it shifts up to third, I can turn off the gear vendors and keep accelerating. Have a lot of acceleration, a great passing gear. That gear normally just blows people away. They, oh man, now I got this great passing gear. I didn't even expect to get that. You know, they all just thinking they're going to get just overdrive instead of those kind of features. Especially a guy like this with the cruise matic because the cruise matic shift column was not one, two, three. It was two at the top, so you could take off in the snow. And then it was three, drive position in the middle. So you had one, two, three, or low, which was just low gear. And uh, so this guy is you know, only expecting he's getting overdrive and probably doesn't realize now that, you know, okay, when he's out cruising, he's going to have a lot more performance as well. You know, this vehicle will probably get 25 to 28% better fuel economy. Lower engine revs takes care of the belts and the motor and the, you know, valve train and all that. Out shopping overdrives, they don't expect that, you know, the overdrives can also be turned on, the gear vendors can be turned on the lower gears to give you all these other features. So we're cruising along doing about 70 miles an hour. We've got 2,700 RPMs right now. And, and we showed you that we could go to second overdrive just by depressing the throttle because the tranny thinks we're going 28% slower anytime the overdrive's on. Um, but we can also use that dimmer switch on the floor and manually turn off the overdrive down to third gear. There's the overdrive off, and now our tachometer at this speed is up at 3,200 RPMs. And I try to accelerate and mash on the throttle. This car won't kick down at 70 miles an hour into passing gear, of course. You know, we'd have to be going 
a lot slower for it to kick down. And we can manually turn on and off the gear vendors at any speed we want, you know? So I just kick the gear vendors back in, so we're cruising. And now, even though we're up here at 70 miles an hour and I mess down on the throttle, we get kicked down into overdrive. When it kicks up, we turn off the overdrive, and then we can turn on the overdrive. So we got three gears here on the highway now. Second over, third, third over, all these gears in close succession, you know, that are keeping the motor and the power that's real nice. I'll demonstrate that again right through three gears here, just to show you what kind of acceleration we have climbing this little grade right here. installation and pretty much this is similar to the earlier Falcon later ones have a large floor we just fall right in so so your 66 and later no problem the 64 we uh, we use an aftermarket little cross member because it comes from the factory with this little wishbone odd little guy a little cross member with a little spring that hooks up to the tranny which isn't very good performance wise if we're going to be out getting on it and stuff so we go to a regular C6 transmission mount, C4, C6 transmission mount from the later cars. And this California Pony Cars, I think, is who makes these, uh, these little uh, cross members. Now, this little cross member, we drop down a half an inch from the, from the way that California Pony Cars makes it. So we put a little half inch shim under here, cut this all off and re-weld it a half inch lower. If you're ordering one from them, simply tell them that you want the tranny mount pad a half inch lower in the stock position and you wouldn't have to do that. Um, then we then we bent this little bar. This little bar normally comes straight out the back of this cross member that holds the emergency brake. We bent it down at a 45 degree angle and then back up flat, slightly tilted towards the exhaust so the emergency brake system can pull nicely underneath the sump of the overdrive and keep this all from being a ground clearance issue. In modification to the floor pan, the only thing we need to do, it doesn't need to be any taller. Typically cars sit with a tranny to the passenger side. So on the passenger side of the tunnel, we took a little body wheel and we cut right across here, about a half an inch in from factory, from the edge, then overlapped the two. Just hit it with a hammer so that they went right over each other and then rebeated it. But just a little, oh, this is probably a quarter inch deep little dent we did with the drift right here from here to here between my fingers so we give a nice little angle to the speedometer cable this is right under the driver's seat post supplied by gear vendors in the kit the speedometer cable now comes over here this car has a aftermarket little box frame connecting the unibody but even on your cars that don't have that you're going to come outside of the unibody and put our Ford Speedo cable adapter on and then our signal generator, this is how we know how fast the vehicle is going. So all very clean install that, in this case, corrects the speedometer as well, because the speedometer wasn't accurate in the car. And then, of course, installed the shortened drive shaft. Uh, we got great drive shaft angles. We got great ground clearance. You can see the overdrive silk is actually up higher than the training mount pad and equal to the exhaust system in this case. Call 800-999-9555 or visit us at gearvendors.com. Hit the overdrive. 